Good. Um, okay, so it the prop was on the norm highly prized for usable security as part of civilization and AI security. Participants were Markham, Morgan, Alan, Will, Austin, Dean, Michaela, and me. Um, and in terms of uh, interaction design of like what we were trying to do, um, we we're trying to do interaction design for usable security. So i.e. we want to make it common to develop user interfaces in which the easy way is the secure way, i.e. the actions that users want to take, they naturally take in a secure fashion, as Dean described. Um, and usable security specifically as related to user interactions is a good, I think, framing of this. Do you want to add anything to yeah, this? Yeah, um, the, the issue is not simply what actions the users take, but what the users expect the consequences of those actions are. Uh, the the, the, the center, central problem that's motivating the Norm Hardy Prize is creating systems in which users understand better the security consequences of the actions that they take. And this involves both changes to the user interface as well as changes to the whole architecture of actions that we're presenting the users with through the user interface, the interaction design, so that they can, through interacting with the user interface, form intuitions about the consequences of their actions, where those intuitions, to the extent that they're inaccurate, tend to fail safe. We had a good, a good concrete example of that. In crypto, mostly the end user interaction is to transfer money. Now, it's actually a pretty terrible interface for that, but it's to transfer an asset to someone. And instead, having the interaction to be uh, I, will, I will sign something cryptographically that says, I will give you this asset if you give me that, that asset. That's a much better interaction style for most human interaction or most business interaction. And you would like that to be the, the affordance that is offered to users of these systems. And then you, you know, there's plenty of improvements to do even over that. But that's, a, that's an example of a concrete difference that, that, that the interactions should provide to us. Wonderful. Yeah. Uh, also, I came up with a there, in the discussion. There came up a a nice, I think, the most compact statement is to enable users to use secure systems securely. Yes. Um, how is it done today? Uh, why is the current system limited? Well, civilization's computer infrastructure is pretty patchwork and insecurable. Now, not only insecure, but we you know argue in the book at least it's really insecurable uh, as it currently is. There's a bunch of potential problems, including attacks on the electric grid, uh, major financial meltdowns, and then other attack vectors like from advanced AI. So uh, one thing that we really argue in the book is like, if you worry about long-term uh, AI security and, uh, and AI safety, then really we have already kind of passed that point at which like, um, you know, those systems can really cause catastro potentially catastrophic risks to civilization. And especially if you worry about advanced AI, you should also worry about security because it's a prerequisite for that going well. Um, and then the more specific thing of, you know, what is potentially uh, disastrous right now about computer, uh, the computer security infrastructure is that today we rely on dialog boxes asking users to confirm their actions. The problem is that they train themselves to click through without considering the implications. Informed consent is not really possible. Anything to add here? Yeah, that, um, uh, that this is very distinct from the underlying infrastructure issue. Imagine that we actually had succeeded at the infrastructure and had built systems that from the software criteria were secure, but users interacting through the user interface misunderstand the security implications of what they're doing as badly as they do now. Uh, we would have failed at the crucial interface between the, the software systems and the human world in a, that, um, to deliver the security that we've achieved at the software level. Yep, sounds good. Um, and then what's new about this approach um, and why is it successful? I think, you know, here we come back to the point that you just made of like, you know, we really want to make all decisions a really explicit part of the user interface, which will allow users to understand the implications of their actions. And, you know, the entire problem of computer security is really too large to tackle. That's why we, you know, came up with this price, the Norm Hardy Prize, um, to honor the late computer security pioneer. Uh, and then also, uh, to really enable us to you to securely use secure computers, as Mark just said, uh, and maybe uh, you know you had discussions uh, with Mark uh, with, with Norm about the yeah. price. Right? Yeah, before before Norm became late, uh, the I did uh, 
talk to him about the prize and ask him what he thought the prize should be for. He, he came up with focusing on the user. He's the one who's more than anybody who had pioneered and, and, and understood deeply the software infrastructure issues around why capabilities and really is, is the mentor for both, both me and Dean. Uh, and then I think he felt like we had made some really good progress on some fundamental aspects of the user interface, specifically from the capability school. Um, uh, but that was sort of the largest remaining piece of research needed in order to know what to do to make things secure. We're a long way from being able to actually deliver user interface security. I would say it's a commonplace, it's common wisdom that in security circles that the user is the weak link. And I would replace that with the user interface is the weak link. We have a few things that people can submit a four pager on, like specific things that we can give this prize, like implementation, user studies and novel systems, theory of the, uh, theory of the mind of the user, mm -hmm. and a sets of principles that uh, I can have modeled according to uh, Ping's principle. And then like, why does this matter? Who cares? And we had a really long discussion about that. Um, yes. I just want to add one thing in that. The other thing that we added is, is, there, is when there are big breaches and big losses yeah. and big interesting things that happen, we also, there are people who will write up, uh, and in fact, I think Kate did one, um, write up in a way that is not, you know, hey, hey, right, but, it, but, it, but it's educational and informative and, and, you know, if you approach it differently, here's how we prevent this from happening again. Those, you know, aren't, th those, those two would be part of this. Yeah, so basically like having a counterfactual test. And, you know, basically we think that volunteer cooperation is really only meaningful when it's based on informed consent and volunteer cooperation is the whole, volunteer cooperation is the whole thing that we wrote this book about and why it's important for civilizational, uh, civilization's ability to, con to continue its Pareto tropism. Uh, and, you know, we basically say that UIs are where the human world meets the crypto world and the UI security issue is really, is the issue of enabling human uh, the human to understand what they're consenting to, which currently uh, is really difficult to do. We've had some interesting discussions with Morgan on like whether yeah. informed consent is in general possible, uh, even if we solve this. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, I don't know if someone wants to say uh, another word on this, but I think we could turn it over to questions. Uh, well, I, I do want to say just quickly like the actionable parts here of like how okay. much will this cost? Okay. Like we had a lot of discussions okay. around this because I think this is actually where like the rubber hits the road. Ideally, uh, we then uh, had another pre-discussion after the discussion with Dean, we would have 10K annually for five years. First, we were like, it should, could be 1K, but you know, given current price sums, if we actually want to draw attention to this price, it really should be like a larger price because we're actually asking people to come up with a new uh, four pages on like specific implementations. Um, there should also be some admin because we want to do a physical award, pay travel stipends for speaking engagements, which is like a really big draw for the price and do press releases and PR around this. And we came up with a few communities around, you know, where we want to really socialize the price uh, with and where we want to have an impact and conferences that people should be speaking at. Uh, and, you know, we currently, we have 10K, thanks to Agoric, uh, for, sponsor, for sponsoring the price. Uh, and if someone cares about computer security, we welcome additional donations um, uh, to, uh, to contribute to this price. Um, yeah. Oh, cool. I want to make one clarification. Yeah. We referred to Norm Hardy as late. Uh, I like that choice in particular. Norm Hardy is not dead. He's not deceased. Uh, he's in cryonic suspension. As Important a result of qualification. What, sorry? Important qualification. Yes. And, um, uh, and as a result of being in cryonic suspension, he is late for many, many meetings. Yes. <laughs> and I should say, like, we had this a bit of like, what are the midterm and final exams to check on completeness? One is, you know, uh, we can use rank roles for submissions on the price, then like medium term to check for successfulness of the price. Um, you know, are the price winner systems that they're building actually adopted <laughs> and value systems? And then the third one is like when Norm comes back from being richified, is he happy with the price? I guess I should, I should add that too. Yeah. Yeah, good. I'll yeah. Add it. Okay, we have uh, about, well, a little less than a minute for questions, comments, in case there are any. Who here's going to reply? Yes. Um, so one question is, so there's a lot of, it's a big topic and there's a lot of people who have interest in improving usability for computer security. Um, what do you think is the aspect of that uh, bigger problem that something in the format of a prize 
is like most uniquely specialized to uh, address? Or like what is like the most effective way, part of that bigger problem for something that's a prize versus, you know, anything else? So I don't know that this is an answer to that question. Uh, and I and I do understand that that's a good question uh, that we should be trying to answer. Um, the seminal works that we've had so far towards usable usable security, um, uh, I would say, accomplish no more than enabling a, a human who's extremely attentive and maintains a high degree of skepticism and alertness to succeed at understanding the implications of what they're seeing and making a decision through the user interface. That's, all to, that's already a huge, extraordinary accomplishment, in my opinion. But, but what we need is systems that users can tend to use safely at a normal level of attention and attentiveness and, um, and lack of skepticism. And we're a long way from that. And the things that make progress towards that, I think, would be very significant. I can easily imagine some prizes of, you know, of the flavor. Here's a bigger thing that was done for an unrelated purpose. And a particular part of it was done well to improve the security of interaction and the safety that users have in that context. Right? If one of the crypto wallets did good pet names and really positioned it, most of the work is still doing the crypto wallet, but there's this one thing that it gives the, 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 the developers or the designers or the product managers that brought that into the product, it gives them a place to celebrate their competitive advantage because they made more usable security. And that can have a very high leverage effect because that can be on, you know, you know, big projects that are then just being able to point at, you know, at, at, at how they're trying to help move the world forward. So, so I think that'll have a lot of leverage. One last thing uh, I want to add is like at Foresight, we do fellowships, uh, like workshops, uh, and then prizes in different areas. And usually the difference between that, like giving it like a fellowship versus a prize is like, if there aren't many great solutions yet, and you're trying to incentivize uh, new solutions, and you know, ideally like this really like, it's quite concrete on like what people can, uh, can, can, can submit here. And so we're really trying to get more eyes on the ball and also uh, yeah, awarding work that is already out there, that, that's great. Um, okay, great. Uh, cool. Then our time's up. Thanks, guys. <laughs>